What's up chess friends? Today you're about to see an iconic example of a perfect attack in chess. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov and let's go ahead and get started. The game was played uh, almost a hundred years ago by uh, Adelheim playing white against an unknown opponent and you know, for critics I do know the correct pronunciation of his name is different, it should be Alekhin, but let's stick to a more common way. Now you're gonna learn also a very interesting and uh, truly evil opening variation here. First, Alejain started off with most common opening moves, bishop c4 going for the Italian game, bishop c5, these are still the most played moves of all in chess, white plays c3, preparing this d4 advancement, black responds with knight of 6, normal developing moves, but at this point, instead of going for the Italian game with d4, which leads to enormous amount of theory and very complicated lines, there is another move which pretty much no one knows about, but it gives you a great chance to win the game right on the spot. Instead of playing d4 right away, you make castle. And you may think, hey Igor, come on, it's just a trivial move. How can this be a dangerous opening weapon? But it actually is. Let's figure out why. Now, if you're going for the Italian game, for the moment, this looks really advantageous for white. You're attacking the bishop, pawns are ready to be pushed forward and drive those knights away, looks really really great but black has this check to the king which saves black and gives black enough counterplay because due to the check they win some time then they can grab this central pawn and you know things become a lot more complicated so let's take this back instead of that if you castle you prepare playing d4 on the next move without having the downside of a potential check bishop b4 after an exchange and that is why d4 is actually a deadly threat and black must address it. But guess what? In most of the cases, they don't and it gives you a winning game right away. I've just opened the database of games to illustrate how deadly this opening actually is. Now, after I just castle, let's look at the statistics in the top bottom corner here. You can see that the moves are sorted based on their frequency and the most popular move is on top. And as you can see right here, the most popular move is Castling Queenside. Exactly a losing mistake, but most of your opponents will play this move because it, it seems good. The next, the second best move, no, not the second best, but the second most popular move of black is Pawn D6, which is also a passive move which doesn't do anything, just a pawn move. And only the third choice of black is Knight takes E4, and even the best move of black only leaves them with an equal position. It doesn't refute your uh, opening, it only gives black an equal inequality. So that's really fun. In most of the cases, they are going to castle and it's going to be a piece of cake for you because here you can crush them and let's see how Alhain did that. As soon as black castles, you happily break through with the move pawn to d4. Uh, by the way, just to address that, the main move knight c4, not the main move, but the strongest move, I'm going to show you a little later how to play against that. But for now, let's stick to the game. Black castles, you break through in the center with pawn to d4 and basically you're almost winning, but of course you need to know how to follow up. We're attacking the bishop, attacking the pawn, therefore black probably must trade here. We exchange on d4, we're still attacking the bishop, therefore it goes back. And what's remarkable about this position is that indeed black put their king to safety by castling. But as it unfortunately happens in real life as well, the king took care of himself throwing the rest of the army under the bus. And now white has just the winning attack, because the king is really the only safe piece in black's position. Uh, the rest of them are exposed to attacks. So white plays pawn d5 here, attacking this knight. Notice that white controls this square, as well as this square by their own knight, and therefore black can't move there. And in the game they played knight e7. Knight e5 is not a bad option, but, I mean, black's position is probably lost anyway. Yeah, they attacked bishop temporarily, but you just move it back, and the knight is out of the game, it's nearly trapped, you're gonna play pawn b4 and actually trap it. Therefore, no, that, that actually doesn't help. In the game, they played knight e7, which was equally bad. <laughs> White plays pawn e5 now, attacking another knight of black. It went back to e8, and now it keeps pushing with pawn d6. And what he does is not only attacks this knight on e7, but even more importantly, this pawn on d6 completely blocks entire black's queen side. This bishop is locked, can't get out, therefore the rook can get out, the queen also, also kinda trapped there, and basically completely, black is completely paralyzed. Anyway, let's see what happens next. Black played knight g6, and here comes bishop g5, attacking this locked queen, black tried to cover knight f6, and now knight c3 white simply develops, but in addition to that, 
White is ready to play knight d5 and take advantage of the pin, put more pressure on this knight. Like plays h6, that's how your opponents usually play when they see your bishop out there on g5. And here is another brilliancy from Alhein. Instead of moving the bishop back or trading here on f6, he played the move queen c2. Believe it or not, it looks like white just develops the queen, but that's not the case. In fact, white counterattacks. When you're attacking, you want to keep playing attacking moves all the time, keeping your opponent under the constant pressure so that they never have the time to regroup, bring out defenders, or do anything to consolidate. Therefore, queen c2. Black took here on g5, because they have nothing else to do anyway, and it turns out that white can now grab here this knight on g6, taking advantage of the pin. And therefore, not only the material balance is still equal, but we managed to throw this queen close to opponent's king. Also, the pawn on g5 is weak, we're ready to capture it, let's say by the knight. That's why black played knight h7, trying to hold on to this pawn at least. And now, probably black thought, okay, probably white is gonna move the queen away, but not today. Uh, Han plays knight d5. It, that's another really, really spectacular move. Hey, how about black capturing the queen? Turns out black can't, even though right now white blocked the bishop, therefore the pawn is not pinned anymore, it can actually grab the queen, but in that case, here comes knight e7, double check to the king by the knight and bishop, therefore king must move, and it leads to knight g6, very neat and beautiful checkmate. For that reason, black can't take here, but of course they are still sick and tired of this queen, of the pin, and they decided to just play king h8 and say, hey, dude, you gotta go now. But white says no way, and white played knight e7. Once again, keeping the queen here under the attack of the pawn, but black still can't take it, because then there is still the same checkmate, knight takes g6. Therefore black can't take that. What can black do then, because if black does nothing, well, white's gonna probably take here and win the game anyway, bishop f7 is on the line as well. And, you know, white's attack is so widely successful, because again, black's army is dozing there on the queen side, the queen is kind of inactive and basically all the black pieces are inactive. Now black decided, okay, let's get rid of this at any cost and decided to take here on e7. It's not a queen sacrifice because here after pawn takes, black finally recaptures on g6. And black was probably counting on white taking here on f8, which would, you know, give white a mature advantage, but at least it would simplify the game and at least it would stop white's attack. But white played another spectacular move. How many more spectacular moves can you expect here? He played knight e5. Instead of grabbing the rook, he says, hey, I don't care about the rook, I'm going for the checkmate. Knight takes g6 would still be the checkmate. And at this point, Black was exhausted and felt that, okay, enough is enough, and he just resigned. And indeed, there is no defense against knight takes g6. If rook comes forward, then the queen can be promoted, and it's gonna be checkmate anyway. So, really spectacular and brilliant attack of white, and every move is just perfect. That's why I said that it's a perfect example of how you should attack with the every move, trying to bring up more and more pieces, leaving your opponent with no free time to defend or do anything. And before we move on to the correct way of playing here, this opening of line for black, I'm happy to say that I actually fulfilled my promise to you. I'm not sure if you remember this or not, but several months ago I conducted a survey and I said that I'm gonna ask you about the most common challenges of you guys and that I'm gonna help you overcome them, okay? And the main questions that you brought up there in the survey was just strategy, middle game, positional play. And that's why I've uh, I've been working during the, those several months on a new course called Top 25 Middle Game Concepts. And this course condensed everything that I know about the middle game and about the chess strategy into one course that contains the most important, most essential information about this. And therefore, I'm absolutely sure that studying just this one course alone can give you more than probably 10 of you know various classical chess books or stuff like that. And it can really help you advance in chess for at least 100 rating points, probably even more. And right now, because the course is just launched, you can also take advantage of the launch offers and get a 50% discount, another course for free and a lot of nice bonuses. So if you're interested, click the link below the video and check this out because it's gonna go in a couple days. All right, coming back to the most critical position after why I just castled, we know that casting for black is not an option. If they try mimicking your move, you just break through in the center with the move pawn e4 and it gives you a crushing attack. What should black do instead? 
Instead of castling black, should play a bold move knight takes e4, destroying white center, even though it looks very dangerous, because white can you know, take advantage of the e-file and play d4, attacking all around, it looks dangerous, but black must go for that. And in this point, the strongest move for white should normally be pawn d4, but it leads to a lot of variations, so I thought how to make it simpler for you. And I think that the simplest option for you would be to play bishop d5, just so that you don't have to remember any any stuff that I'm sharing with you, remember any op any you know complex variations. Bishop d5 is really simple. It double attacks knights, and it simply aims to get the pawn back. Because the knight is attacked, it's gonna move back. Now you eliminate this knight, which was a defender of black central pawn, and now you can get your pawn back and equalize. Let's say black castle is now you play pawn d4 winning also an extra tempo, the bishop comes back, and then you play bishop g5, bring the bishop forward, then you finish your development with possibly knight d2, and you're just having a nice game, and it's just a game of chess, a stronger player will win. So, like, and that's the best case scenario for black, and the most popular scenario is that black is gonna go down right after an opening. Here's our puzzle of the day, it is black to play and win. Please think about this, and in case you can't find the solution, please write it down in the comments below. In case you can't find the solution, just scroll to the comments, somebody will find it for sure. Finally, let me also say that in case you're wondering how to play against the opening that I've showed you as black, you know that I've got another video that covers just that, and it's actually a great opening weapon for black. In case you decided to enroll into the course Top 25 Middle Game Concepts, I'm gonna see you there in a moment, and thank you very much for watching, for the rest of you, just have a great rest of the day, and I'll talk to you in my next videos. Ciao!